does sound like it's sitting in the box. But that box contains a lot of fun stuff. Oh, good morning, people. It's me again. Ocean 5. Let's just do a bit of tweaking. We're here on the Wheel Superstore in Southwick, Sussex. Thank you very much indeed, guys, for letting me take this brand new little spank from machine out. Um, let's get on the bike. Let's give it a first thoughts, the look and the feel, and we'll take it from there. Right, first impressions, what do you think? I like the look of it. It's quite dynamic, sleek. One thing I did notice is that the petrol tanks are like further down. Obviously when you've got more sort of like fuel weight, that's gonna give a lower sense of gravity. It's also got the new LC8C engine, parallel twin. Um, apparently taken from the Husqvarna engine when in the days of BMW, apparently. I don't know, but obviously uh, KTM have developed that further and it should be quite a sleek little unit. Um, developing site, 799cc. KTM always read it down to the nearest 10, 790. Um, but you'll also find this machine in the 790 Duke as well. Obviously they've got the Adventure R version. There's obviously visual differences that with it, with an acrobatic uh, can. This has just got a standard can. I'm not too sure about this end bit. It just looks... So much has happened at the front and all the way through and then you just get down to this little last bit and it's just uh, um, loving these new LED lights. That's, that's quite cool, like a, an opaque uh, look LED. See bright lights underneath and obviously LED. Usual wasp style headlight says it means business, just completely different as to what you find with anything else. On my Supermoto Tura, my, my you know, radiator grill is completely pitted, so you need some kind of protection or some kind of guard to see that's happening. Glad to see that's actually on this bike here, and also got good protection that down here. Yes, these are petrol tanks. People are saying that these are going to get annihilated, hit, ruined, etc. But believe me, there's loads of protection out on there, and they're using a particular type of plastic, apparently. Uh, to give that any strength. If you do happen to come off, there's no extra protection that you'll need with that really. Um, anyway, let's get let's get let's get on the machine. Let's get going. Kill switch, right, clutch in. Alright, first impression, the seat is actually quite hard, but I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Engine sounds. Yeah, it's certainly not a, a V-twin <laughs> sounding engine. Right, ride mode. Set, street, that's what I want, street. Back. Well, that's pretty intuitive. We'll have a look at that in a, in a, in a little while. Right. Oh, okay. That is really, initial reaction is very light. Um, I'm only putting along 20 mile an hour, second gear. But the indicator switch, my hands, is, is, seems to be a bit of a bit of a stretch. Right, second gear. That's. Ooh, 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 okay. Being a, being a brand new machine, I, I do expect things to be sort of like quite tight and quite hard until things bed themselves in. Um, but on a normal road, it's, it's quite bumpy. Alright, let's 
is just a, a poodle around the back streets. Now I'm on a fairly bumpy road and you can certainly feel, I can certainly feel the back. It would be nice I think if um, there was some adjustment there so it's just a little bit smoother. I could go in a different ride mode. Let's see what it's like. Let's go to ride mode. We've got rain off road. Might be more the conditions for our roads in Sussex. Let's go road mode, Let's come off the accelerator, close throttle, right, it's now in off-road mode, see if that makes a, a difference. Right, let's go for a bit of a country run. That red line is too early. This red line... No, getting like red indication, 6,000 revs. It's capable of doing 12 by looking at the clock. Well, I know this is quite a hard machine. Close roll in street mode. Gear. Getting a fair amount of wind from that um, visor. I don't feel buffered at all, but I can distinctly feel where I'm getting um, hit by the, uh, the wind. But actually, it's impressive. Oh yeah, this is this is a. This is going to lap up country roads. Good lean angle. You know, now I'm getting to use of the bike a little bit more. I feel like my arms are relaxing. You know, I can just hang fire with that a bit. It's a very, my initial thoughts are it's a very capable machine, very capable. Six gear going through corners. Well, hey! <laughs> oh yeah, it's got nice torque to it, nice torque. It's not overkill. It doesn't throw you on the back of your seat. So you know, if you're a, if you're a fairly new rider, I think you're going to be quite confident with some of this machine. So this is this this review is purely first impressions. You know, it's nothing in depth or anything along those lines, but hopefully I'll try and give you a, a bit more detail as far as specifications go um, towards the end of the ride. <laughs> Third gear. Nice talk. Oh, nice responsive rear brake as well. That's an improvement to my machine. Go around the corner. Try and find a position to uh, overtake these two cars. Only when it's safe to do so. Right, how are we looking for, a, for an overtake? Ah, oh, no! Right. I think this BMW is going for it, isn't it? That! I came 
Great to overtake. Wasn't sure what that BMW was going to do. I hung back and then when you decide to commit, you pull open that throttle and you're committed. It, it, it responds. It responds beautifully. You know what you're going to expect from this bike. Gotta keep your eye on the speedo. Could this be a sub 1000 cc KTM licensed loser? All right, just going to run through the, uh, the technical details about the bike. You know, it's a two cylinder four stroke LC8 C inline twin. The displacement is 799 cubic centimetres, obviously 790, which you find this particular engine on the Adventure and the Duke. Um, the power is 70 kilowatts or 70, uh, 95 brake horsepower with a torque of 88 newton metres. It's an electric starter, obviously, as we know, and there's a forced oil lubrication with two oil pumps. Gearbox is six speed. It's obviously a liquid cooled engine with a, and it's got a PASC PAC anti hopping clutch which is mechanically operated. The CO2 emissions is 98 grams per kilometre and the fuel consumption, now this is quite interesting, it's a 20 litre tank which is probably good for about 350 miles or 450 kilometres which is a 4.4 gallon tank. Um, yeah, quite impressive that. As you can see, the 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 the, uh, the tanks are quite low on this bike. Um, it's got uh, inverted W or upside down WP suspension forks, which are fully adjustable. Um, the suspension on travel on both the fronts and rear is 200 millimeters. We've got two uh, radially mounted four piston calipers, and then you've got a two. And we've also got obviously a two um, a single disc facing caliper and that at the back. Uh, front and um, front brake disc is 320mm, rear disc brakes is 260mm. Um, ABS. Uh, obviously it's chain driven and the ground clearance is 233mm. Seat height, which is adjustable is at 850 millimeters tank capacity 20 liters dry weight 189 kilograms so for what it is it's actually quite a compact i think it might be the most compact engine of this size there is out there at the moment i could be wrong but i believe that to be the case anyway i'm having so much fun i want to get back on it again just sitting here, neutral, my feet are firmly flat on the floor. I've got an inside leg of like 30 to 33 inches, so I'll give you some idea of like how tall I am. Overly tall, not overly small, um, but I'm planted quite nicely on the bike. It's a little bit low than I'd like, but I say this, the seat height is adjustable, but I don't know what setting I have that on. But, but in a riding position, yeah, I just feel absolutely fine, really comfortable. It's quite natural, you know, for a, a more upright machine. <laughs> Clear road. That can only mean one thing. I'm not expecting this to be the fastest cookie in the world, but it certainly does the job. If um, 
If you're wondering about the screen, is it height adjustable? I don't think it is. Well, hey, um, keep doing that. Thing is, you're coming down through the gear, so I'm probably expecting a little bit more resistance. But say, I think that's something I'm normally used to with my bike. <laughs> this bike has injected me with a bit of laughing power how did it do that I do not know what's it like and out on tiny country roads is it flexible through the gears as and when you need to Observe it's 30 mile an hour. You know, I know motorcycles have sort of like come a long way and you get used to your machine. But very quickly I find that I'm getting used to this one. Um, you know, I haven't been riding it for long. The seat's a little hard. So I'm not sure how my bum will be in a, after a sort of like six hours of riding. I mean, I'm used to putting in some days, which I'm quite happy to do. But you, you know, a comfortable saddle will obviously help. But you know, yeah, I'm starting to get used to. I'm starting to get used to this saddle. Right, we're going to work our way up to Falcon. I said that correctly, Fold King with an L. It's in Sussex. If you're ever in this deck of the woods, head down to Edburton, Fold King, and to all around sort of like Henfield. There's a couple of lovely little pubs that around here. Great for walking, great for motorcycles too. Look at that. Oh, what's that national speed limit time? Third, go. Quite capable. So if we do a see how long it takes to get to 60 mile an hour from 20 in fourth gear. Six, five, three, five. Oh. 20 mile an hour, oh, oh. 60, that didn't take too long, it's quite quick, very throaty down the, down the low ends, it just, it just was not, it, couldn't see, couldn't feel the torque on it, low end, but that's, yeah, are you really going to do 40, 20 mile an hour in fourth gear? first, I thought it was second. Oh that's surprising. Got the old shepherd and dog here. That's a lovely pub, especially in the summer. Oh. Yeah, I think this is happiest when you actually change gears quite early. Oh, another white disc with a black line through it. That could only mean one thing. Third go. is uh, about just over 11 grand I think which price wise well you know it's a KTM it's you know you're paying a little bit more for it but you're going to get an awesome machine out of that 
Um, if you could f afford a few grand more, seriously, look at the Adventure 1290S. Um, if you want to go a lot more off-road, obviously the R version. So obviously differences between the two, both in technical and in looks. But I really do like this machine. Now I'm not wagging it at all, it just just riding how I normally ride. seating position it's really comfortable been around 20 mile an hour that it does sound like it's sitting in the box So that box contains a lot of fun stuff. Okay, you got 60 mile an hour with these. So no issue there, there was a car coming down the road and I thought well we'll just squeeze out in front of that and that's done good. Got a 60 mile an hour, I can feel the wind, you know it's certainly off my chest, that's for sure, and actually over my head yeah, I can, I can feel it on the top of my head. That's probably about it. I think if you look, yeah, a couple of inches smaller. Oh, I really like this machine. Smooth engine, really smooth. I think they've done well with this LC8C engine. The parallel twin. Pressed. Remarkable. So far, what are my plus points? What are my bad points? I think the good points are the TFT screen, the layout. The you know it's easy to read. So I think they've probably had a look at the um, the fonts clarity the font size this is actually quite doable for me even though I'm wearing glasses um, it'd be nice to see sort of like the gear selection a little bit bigger maybe speedo's good obviously you've got KTM my connects whatever they call it uh, too little time to put that through the test today I need to have the bike for like a, a week long thing and, and, and to get a real good feel of it you know as I, as I suggest this, it, this is a, a first impression ride out it's a brand new machine. I'm liking it, really liking it. Uh, what else is good with the machine? The engine, fantastic. Yeah, that is. Um, uh, what, what can I say? It's, it's, it's yeah, you know, still, still in the sufficient, sufficient pull. That's the thing. I think that's the bit. This, this, this engine, it's sufficient. It, it's more than capable it is a really good engine you know what more do you want from an engine if you just want to go for a, a sunday ride a commute you want to use the bike every day um i wouldn't say it's a, a mile muncher on the motorway um but certainly roads like this absolutely fine it, it's injected with a bit of like you know smileage 
so I oh, can get pretty smart that with me on this one. Um, what other good points are there about this bike? Um, I think the fuel tanks are like lower, they're larger, get more range out of it. Um, yeah, yeah, really good there. Um, initial bad points. It's tough to call, but the, the indicator position is it's a little bit too far back. I'm going to reach out a little bit more than I would like. Um, seating is a little bit hard, um, but I suppose that'll probably bed itself in over time. Haven't really got time to use sort of like other features, so I can't really comment at this stage. Um, but if they're the only two things, the only two things I can pick up, which is not great about the machine, it's done bloody well. <laughs> it's done really well. Oh yeah. This is what you want to be. Yeah, I think if I was a new rider, I would certainly seek uh, dealer assistance just to uh, adjust the suspension settings. I know it can be done automatically, but I think it just needs to be a little bit more refined um, for a user. It's a little bit, a little bit half of my liking, but you know, again, it's a brand new machine, likely to bend itself in. Um, I mean, my motorbike, I've had it like nine years, um, and I've never changed the. Uh, suspension settings on that at all because it's perfect why would you want to change settings this one I would have to I'll certainly look at it anyway look at that lean angle oh just, just that lean angle is like so much I'm thinking I'm going to scrape my peg along the, on the, on the floor along the road Cool. It's so low gravity, I think get a better lean angle out of it. Right, let's plant it 70 mile an hour and see what it's like on a fast road. Right, observations. Cruise control. I'm pretty sure it hasn't got it. It'd be nice to have it. But there again, if you want to do mile munching, this isn't the machine for this road. If I had to get from A to B and had to use motorways, um, this, this could make it quite tiresome. Um, I'm feeling a lot of the road and that through the suspension and into my body and into my arms. Um, cruise control would make that easier I can feel my fingers and my hand my lower arm and the wrist you know vibrating somewhat but you know if you're gonna do motorways for 20 30 mile or something I'm sure it'll be fine it's certainly not an armchair but then it's not designed to be. It's designed to have fun. It's designed I mean, for the 1290s baby brother. <laughs> there's a lot of uh, similarities between the two. You know, if you're considering the 1290, you might feel it's a bit big. Take this out. Take this out. Get a feel for both machines. Then decide. There's a comparable, you know, price difference between the two, which could also sway your decision. But I'm loving this machine. I really am. But when I consider, can I can I tour on this? You know, around the roads of like Switzerland, Austria, France, wherever. Absolutely, this will give you a lot of grins. It's, it's a purely, it's a brilliant machine going through corners like hair for pens and everything else. Like that, 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 that's where it is. But to get there. I think you need another machine. It'll get you there for sure, but you might feel a little bit tired out in the long run. Right, normally like to expect a bit of resistance, but now I'm going to have to rely on the brakes a little bit more.
impressive in that third gear. So, where would I sort of like see this machine? Where, 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 where could I see it? See what type of customer? Anyone? <laughs> um, you know. A any any biker, male or female, it's just a brilliant, brilliant machine. You will not be disappointed. You know, if you're an occasional tourer um, and you just want to go and explore a road, especially like the A's and the country roads, perfect. Um, you know, like for a one-nighter, perfect. It's a, it's a good sized machine, it doesn't feel too small. It feels nice, it's just, it feels like the right size. I mean, for me, I like touring for long hours over a fair few days. I mean, that's my preference. Um, I would be more inclined to look at the 1290 uh, Adventure S. Um, would love to take one of those out, actually. Uh, the last time I rode one was, what, 2017, when I was considering selling my bike. But my bike, it's raw. Overall, it's an awesome machine. This is exactly what I would expect from KTM. They know how to deliver some awesome looking machines, even though that sort of like the wasp head headlight when it first came out, it was like, uh, but it, it, it just grows on you. Well, it did me. You know, I'm not sure that this carries sort of like the same features as the 1290S, like, you know, um, adaptive headlights. Uh, I think this is obviously standard LEDs. Um, but yeah, it carries all sort of like all the latest technology in other areas, like Bluetooth connectivity. It'd be nice if there's somewhere for your phone. I mean, you've got a GPS mount, like, some room for the phone but it's nice I sort of like to see there's some spaces here to you know add something to it you know a bracket or something along those lines I think if I was a uh, you know a new rider you know wanted to look at doing touring and you want to sort of like an immediate machine just to try and get a feel for things like that then I think this is certainly a, um, a contender you know, even if you're considering other manufacturers on the makes, to get your bum on one of these. And if it inspires confidence and you feel at one with it, then, you know, think about whether you would like to buy one or not. I think it's well priced for what you get. But would I buy one? No, I say I'm, I'm more. I, I do like my touring. I, I I like a larger machine. So I think for me, I'll go for like the 1290, 1290s. But I'm happy with my machine. Do subscribe. Do hit that bell um, because there'll be more, many more reviews uh, to come as we uh, explore other machines. Um, but on the wheel being absolutely fantastic. They're a supporter of uh, this YouTube channel. Um, so yeah, do subscribe, click that bell, and look out for other videos that we do. On the wheel super in Southwick. Search on the wheel. Come down and see them. Have a cup of tea. Come and say hello. They are a really friendly, friendly bunch of people. And I'm not just saying that either. Um, I think we'll park it here next to the Duke. Oh yeah, nice, nice turning circle. Yeah, there's your other alternative. 790 Duke, same engine, more exposed. Sporty looking. Absolutely fantastic.